We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Hello to everyone. So, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our participants and speakers. So you are at the town hall session, universal acceptance provider access through collaboration. So we spend this meeting in the hybrid format. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, those who are on, on the hall, in the hall, they can see our speaker there. And uh, our other our members from USG are probably also there in the room. So guys, you can show you up and raise your hands. Uh, and uh, we will communicate during the session through um, online tools. Uh, today, Dennis Tantanakar is our remote participant moderator, and he will assist you during the session. So please use uh, all the uh, possibilities in Doom chat. And thank you, Dennis, for this support. So uh, today we will discuss the Universal Acceptance Global Initiative and how it can facilitate the better social inclusion and wider access, particularly for end users uh, who prefer to navigate the global network and identify themselves online on their local languages. And what collaboration on global or local levels is required to foster UI implementation process and finally make it a reality. So uh, this morning I have read um, Diplo Foundation summary on the IGF day three, and it was stated there that uh, if you are reading this daily summary, you belong to the 63 percentage of, pop of the population worldwide who have access to the internet. An estimated 47 percentage of the world population or two and a half billion people have never access to the internet. So you may know that most of these people are from non-English speaking countries. And of course, one of the indispensable aspects of meaningful access and digital inclusion is development of local languages on the internet, such as uh, local content, which empowers users to join the conversation and global knowledge base, as well as upload their own stories and use all benefits of online environment. So, um, to, uh, I'm just checking if we are co-hosts. Unfortunately, not. So I can't show my slides, but uh, okay, I will try to explain it in uh, some simple words. So universal acceptance is uh, another important aspect of truly multilingual internet development. And uh, that makes access and usage of digital space easier okay. because Maria, sorry to interrupt okay. you, but uh, you are a co-host now. Okay, great, finally. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you can see my slides. Yes. Okay, great. So uh, as I have said, uh, so universal acceptance makes access easier uh, uh, and uh, because uh, people can navigate online and use their internet identifiers such as websites and email addresses on their local languages. So uh, in general, universal acceptance means that all domain names and all email addresses work in all software applications. So and um, you can see on the screen the examples of such domain names and email addresses that are available online uh, on the internet today. So these are the new Latin domain names appeared in 2013 and internationalized domains and emails that available since 2010 and even earlier. So, but still not all software systems and devices support them despite the fact that internet standards and technical solutions for develop developers are in place. So in the orange orange parts, uh, some of the orange parts you can see parts that you can see on the screen. Then that they means that uh, here you can be used your local language, 
So, and if you're an user, you should be aware that you can register and use such internet identifiers <laughs> online today. So if you are an owner or developer of a website or an application, so you should be aware that your customers can use these identifiers and your software, of course, product, your software products should be ready to work with them. So, and uh, this is uh, like the official introduction to the universal acceptance um, concept. So to remind you what we are talking about, but I would like to ask our audience actually to share their opinion on what do they think about universal acceptance and uh, benefits that its achievement can bring. So I would like to ask organizers to show the pool on the screen. We have some short pool for our audience. So if possible, please share the pool. Is it possible? So, okay, I hope that the organizers can do it. No, this is slides. I'm in the pool. Okay, I, I have, I think I can, uh, please stop sharing slides. I can, okay, I think I have started the pool. Hope our participants can see it. So you can take uh, two, one, two, three minutes to look and read the questions and answer it. So, and uh, we will show, I hope that we can, we'll be able to show the results at the second part of the session. If not, we will show them right <laughs> at the moment when you have take part in it. So, uh, but before you just expressing your opinion, I would like to start uh, the main session um, and a discussion with our panel today. And according to the introduction to universal acceptance issues, uh, it, the first side, it can be considered as a problem of technology interoperability, but the way how universal acceptance implementation process goes so far, so uh, brings to the conclusion that um, this global process implies overcoming not only technical barriers, but requires a larger circle of stakeholder collaboration efforts. So to involve more stakeholder groups, to work together, to finally achieve your adoption at all levels. So, and we would like to discuss exactly this aspect in more details today. And uh, we are quite happy to have at our panel, the representatives of uh, the main stakeholder groups involved those who are closer to end user needs and represent their interests, and as well the technical implementers who are demanded to realize such support for universal acceptance in their software products and uh, even already done it. So, um, okay, and uh, my first question to the panel uh, will be the following. So from the perspective of your stakeholder role, what are you doing so far or what can be done for the wider universal acceptance implementation and what potential collaboration with whom and how is needed for your stakeholder group to force universal acceptance achieving. So uh, our speakers will have uh, up to five minutes to share their opinion and our audience is invited to ask questions that we will share with the panelists and we will start with the uh, end user side and uh, okay before that before the introduction of the speakers mm, okay i think that our participants have take part in their pool okay i'm i'm closing it uh and i will try to share the results a little bit later okay so our first speaker sylvia helene from La Crawler, she is representing the civil society stakeholder group. Okay, Sylvia. Uh, hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, hello. We can, we can hear hello. you. Mm -hmm. Hi. I think, I, think I, I have to share your slides. Is yes, please, the first one. Correctly. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Just a second. Um, one minute, please. Okay. 
Bir devam. So he there I still there. Okay. The first one. Yes, mm -hmm. perfect. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for having me on this important panel. I'm Silvia Herlin Leite from Brazil, and I want to share with you all the experience of Latin American and the Caribbean regarding universal acceptance. Next one, please. We are part of ICANN, we are LACRALO, and we are 61 organizations representing internet end users. We almost have at least one representative in each country of Latin American and Caribbean. In 2018, uh, we began a journey towards promoting the universal acceptance of domain names and email addresses. We created a working group to study the possible impacts and needs of universal acceptance. Next one, please. As we represent end users of the internet, the first measure to generate awareness among our people was to conduct several webinars explaining this new topic for the representative of these organizations so that they could multiply this information and thus create the knowledge of and the need for implementation to end users. In order to awareness with technical stakeholders directly, we do some webinars in, Bol in Bolivia, Paraguay and Nicaragua uh, with internet providers. We also be in touch with others ICANN's group like DNS Women to enlighten women around the world to help us spread the news. Next one, please. And uh, in order to create uh, awareness uh, among Latin American technical and software developers concerning the need to update, update and prepare the systems for multiple scripts, we create the LACRALO Universal Acceptance Training Program with ICANN and the Universal Acceptance oh. Steering Group help. Launched in 2021, uh, this training uh, program consists in four sessions covering key topics such as email address, internalization, uh, universal acceptance for Java developers, and how to engage in universal acceptance activities. More 100 participants from 14 LAC countries participate in the training. Next, please. <clears throat> And what's next? We are going to do the same and more. For example, we are preparing study that will try to repeat the study already done in Brazil that consists of seeing 100 local sites with their country code or the most used sites in each country to identify if they are ready for universal acceptance or not. AILA community are preparing another training program for the next year. So you are all invited to participate in NARALO Universal Acceptance Training Program in January 22. The biggest challenge is overcoming apathy and lack of care from, from technical community, internet providers and CCTLDs, also multinational companies including governments operating in our region so that they understand the importance of this issue. For example, is governments require universal acceptance readiness as the pre-required to be in pro procurements, I suspect we will see an immediate jump in acceptance. Thank you. Thank you, Silvia, so much for your presentation and uh, for your slides and activities. And uh, so, Dennis, uh, unfortunately, I can see the chat and I'm sharing the slides. So if you have any, um, any questions, any comments, so please do not hesitate to share them, OK? Mm -hmm. OK, yeah. so mm -hmm. thank no, you sorry, so Mariette. much. No, no, it was just, uh, you, you were showing the slides. It was on the PowerPoint view, not the slideshow. Uh, okay, I will try to, to change it next time, but uh, yep. on my screen, they were in a slideshow. <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay. So our next speaker from the end user side is Cengiz Akacharturk. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing the name incorrectly. So from the Middle East Technical University and he will represent the academic sector. So Cengiz uh, in the room. Um, okay. okay, if I need to share slides, I will do it once again. Okay, so I hope it works. So people, Hear me? Okay. Uh, hello from Katowice. I'm on site and good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, my name is Cengiz. Uh, I have been a faculty member uh, at the Cognitive Science and Cybersecurity Departments of the Middle East Technical University in Turkey. Uh, recently, I am at uh, Jagiellonian University in Krakow, Poland. Um, so I represent here the uh, stakeholders in academy in general, and I want to present um, a perspective, an academic perspective to UA. Um, higher education institutions, I should start with this general concept of higher education institutions, which implement these academic activities. So they have three major missions. Uh, these, this is very well known, research, teaching, and community services they do. Um, and uh, each of these perspectives indeed uh, has something to tell about universal acceptance. Um, first of all, from a, I, I will also take this academic perspective. I mean, the researcher's perspective when I understand and think about universal acceptance, first of all, it is a domain of technology acceptance. What do we mean by technology acceptance? It is the following. When you develop novel technologies, people usually resist. So it is not easy for the societies to accept it and start using it. And as an example, consider these vaccinations, mRNA or similar novel technologies. People usually say that, okay, fine, that is wonderful technology, but when it comes to implementation, you start to observe hesitations that um, they do not explicitly verbalize. So this is exactly the research focus on technology acceptance. You try to understand uh, how people perceive those new technologies. And here my perspective that I would propose in this talk, in this very short talk is that we can conceive universal acceptance as, a tech, as an instance of technology acceptance and follow the research methodologies for them. So what we do we mean by research methodology is this, uh, there are validated questionnaire style investigations like technology acceptance model development, and you have to do them in most cases as um, cross-cultural studies in different cultures. So this fits very well then uh, in, in, in a collaborative approach to UA studies. And I think this is one of the major domains of collaboration from a researcher's perspective on universal acceptance. And it should also be followed up by longitudinal research, which would then allow us to observe what is happening in time uh, so that we come up with dissemination strategies to make it stronger. So the implementation stronger. So this is the research perspective. Um, the second is about teaching that we are all familiar with that. Higher education institutions, mostly universities, they do undergraduate teaching and they do graduate teaching, you know. And um, these new technologies, as for those new te technology, it takes time. Uh, before they find their place in academic curriculum. So for example, to, to make it more concrete, consider the work on human computer interaction and human robot interaction. For a long time, they have not been included in academic curriculum in computer engineering and sciences as, as part of, let's say, as a formal part of the curriculum, but it was only individual efforts of the researchers to introduce those new concepts in their lectures, especially in undergraduate studies. So what about UA then? Uh, it is not existent recently in academic curricula, um, but in future, it will uh, find its place 
especially in computer science, engineering, science and technology policy departments, and possibly in computer education, instructional technologies curriculum. So for this, we should collaborate with institutions which offer suggest curricula for those departments like IEEE and ACM. So this is another uh, pillar for potential collaboration to improve the dissemination of universal acceptance in a global, let me say. And the final one is uh, the community services. This is the third mission of uh, higher education institutions. And uh, they usually cover uh, computing services and technical support services in universities. And these are also places where usually novel technologies get disseminated first, first at the university, then in the society. So uh, they have chances to collaborate again globally to offer UA compatible student services, for example, for international students. So uh, this is kind of a necessity too, that uh, we will need more and more in future. And another point for collaboration is that very brief, this is the last point that I wanna make, is that um, UA training for the public can be done uh, through those uh, services at universities, because univers universities are higher education institutions are usually conceived as trusted bodies by the society, then this is a good channel to disseminate uh, UA related concepts to the uh, in our universities and then to the society at large. So thanks for your patience. These were the points that I wanted to make. Okay, thank you so much, Cengiz. Uh, I think that uh, this is really insightful input. And I believe that uh, research is absolutely needed as we sometimes we do not understand totally the um, influence of the local language of how on our mentality, how we think, how we try to express ourselves. So we really need more information on how different languages work with people minds, I think. And it also helps us to understand the behavior that uh, people uh, demonstrate online probably because it can be connected with uh, the usage of their languages and the culture that comes under it. So I think that uh, the research and academia sector involvement is absolutely necessary. And also um, our fraud uh, speaker who will represent the end user um, side today. Uh, this is uh, Anil Kumar Jain from uh, National Internet Exchange of India. And he is representing the opinion of a government. So Anil, please. you. The floor thank is you, yours. Maria. Thank you, Maria. Uh, thank you for the, giving this opportunity. Universal acceptance is a very important aspect, not only for India, but I think the whole, whole world. Initially, when you started, you said that around 53% of the people are able to access and 47% people are not able to access internet. They might not have. But I want to add one more aspect of this. There are even in English speaking uh, uh, countries, there are people who are not literate, who are not able to read or, you know, uh, understand uh, English also. So basically universal acceptance uh, should deal not only with non-speaking population, but should also deal with the non-literate uh, uh, non or illiterate people also. Looking at the role of the government uh, in India, we are 89% of the Indian population is non-English speaking. So it is very, very important. Although we are the largest connected country with more than 850 million broadband users. Similarly, we are also largest non-connected country also, as I said, uh, because of uh, universal acceptance. The role of government, which we look, is that we set the standard. We monitor the implementation of the policies which are defined for all, including all multi-stakeholders. We also should mitigate the barriers in case we have any problems in implementing and using those technologies and also remove any inter-stakeholder issues in case the multi-stakeholders, they are not able to collaborate with each other because of certain issues. I think the government role uh, comes in that. In India, government is making subgroups 
to ensure that email providers separately website designers separately browsers and it applications they should be able to set up their own targets and implement the universal acceptance as a concept so what uh, steps we have taken we have created a multi stakeholding stakeholder group uh, it is a is a group which uh, represent government non government civil societies technical academia everybody put together and we are forming uh, uh, going ahead with the universal acceptance implementation now here what we have done is that we are saying to uh, we are setting standards saying that email provider now whether if they they are ua ready then we will provide five star to them in case they are not ua ready but they are closer we may provide four star to them so now everybody whether it is a email provider browsers uh, uh, website designers they will get some kind of star right so it indicate uh, whether they are close to ua readiness or they are not close to ua readiness and this will also motivate them to go to the next level uh, we are bringing organization together like google microsoft rediff joho xgen plus nixi together to undertake their own role in ua readiness and ua implementation so that everybody understand their own role they understand a collective role together as a group uh, to implement for the nation they are asked to self set their targets so it is not the group which is mandating them it is not the government who is mandating them and they will set up their own target that you know the browser organization like joho will set up say i will be ua ready by march 2022 or by june 2022 and then we will be able to implement together as a group uh we have uh, started working like this that uh, we are providing a free digital identity to around 100000 villages in the country so basically the website will be provided free the domain will be provided free the email will be provided free and when in case after providing Uh, one digital identity to one village in case uh, some more people want then th that can also be provided we are uh, uh, promoting lot of uh, content generation in local languages for example nixi has undertaken two promotional scheme if you are able to upload a uh, content in non english language uh, then you will be uh, getting some uh, cash prize plus certificate and all the similarly in case the web designer if the web designer per local language is excellent then they will get a huge uh, maybe around 10000 dollar and uh, certificate uh, to promote them so these kind of efforts are being done to generate more and more content in okay. local languages and we are distributing the free idn emails with every idn in this country so that idn alone has no meaning if we are able to provide a email in idn i think that will take uh, further to the next level of ua implementation okay. india is the only country which is providing 22 idn in 22 official languages i think this is the country with the largest number of idn so we hope and we understand the importance of universal acceptance and that is what the inclusive growth of internet is possible thank you thank Anil. you maria Thank you Anil so much so I'm really impressed uh, how much the Indian government do for for the universal acceptance implementation so this is really really great example and uh, I think many of us sh should uh, follow it so thank you Anil uh, once again and uh, I would uh, switch to the uh, another part actually to the implementer part right now and our uh, all our speakers from this side they are representing the technical community and private sector companies so and the first uh, word will be uh, provided to the uh, ej data so uh, he represent the data exchange technologies also from india so we are listening to the another side from india and uh, please ej you have 5 minutes share your opinion thank you maria i hope you have my presentation Uh, to bring it, or do you want me to uh, do the right till then? Uh, thank you, uh, Maria. This is 
uh, fantastic that we are discussing uh, UA at a uh, IGF and uh, so many speakers are speaking. Uh, as uh, chair, I have, uh, have spoken now, this is an opportunity for me to uh, share a little bit of technical side of and what technical community can do. Next slide, please. So this is, and please bring it to the slide show, please. So uh, Maria, please bring it full screen. No, it's gone. Yeah, that's right now. So our, uh, is the last slide. Go to the first slide, please. Yeah, that's all, thank you. So as a technical community, uh, we have uh, many things. Obviously, uh, any framework, any software, any website, uh, technical community comes into the picture. So as a technical community, we need to oversee the remediation of standards, programming tools, languages, and platforms all need to be UA ready. And this is uh, not just the UA work, the other uh, part of the UA work also being done in the standards in various organizations where they are talking about how do we make the UA ready platforms and applications. And that's the core work of the technical community. And UA technical community works very actively in that along with the measurement working group and tech working group, both work together to ensure that technical working group uh, is delivering what is required in the world. The another part which we require is the build platforms and softwares which are UA ready. So my friend Mark is also going to speak about what Microsoft did, but this is what actually the companies are doing to build platforms which are UA ready. So like Google made their Google apps as UA ready for phase one, so as Microsoft, so as right now Apple, and so as Action Plus, which is my company, we made our software as UA ready. So personally, I have led this initiative in my organization where not only the email platforms, the video conferencing platforms are also UA ready. So our video meet uh, platform, which is a video conferencing platform is now UA ready. Now it can uh, have acceptance of email addresses in Hindi in all the languages can communicate, can register. You can sign up, do transactions, all that stuff. And uh, mobile apps, which are uh, mentioned here, data mail, and of course my primary software Exen Plus, which, uh, which, is, which can also host the ID and so this is a technology role which we all have. And this one company sitting in India is not enough uh, to deal with the whole world. We all technology providers, all community have to move in that direction so that whenever they are building an application. So video meet was built during the Corona times, but we ensure that it is UA ready at that time. And that's exactly what oh, everybody needs to do. Next slide, please. So how you can experience a little bit. So those who are listening to me here, uh, how do we get and test your application, whether you are UA ready application or not? And the first roadblock comes here is that, how do you get an email address, uh, which is working email address for your organization? Can you send an email? Can you send receive an email? So here is, I'm offering you with this uh, technology side. We did this exercise in, even in ICANN in Kobe, when we provided the free email address to the app to everyone who, could, who wanted to try their application. So as now you can install that app and get an email ID in not just Hindi, it's mentioned here, but you can draw in 27 languages, any language of your choice and try it out in your application. The idea is to experience what UA is all about. Get an email address, a non-Latin character and try it out in your application and see whether it works or not. If it doesn't, then you need to fix that bug. And the technical community role is to ensure that it does not rejecting any email address, it flawlessly works. And obviously host your IDNs. If you have an IDN, if you want to host it, then uh, we also provide the free email address. This is basically an initiative from my company to support the UA work and also let people experience how they can enable their applications. And if they fail a problem, then of course the whole community of UASG.tech and private community can support. Next slide, please. And that's our role uh, as a technical community. Um, the help companies see UA benefit. And that's a very important one because why uh, I get this question quite often as a US chair also that how and why I should invest a dollar to make my application UA ready. Who is the taker? Where is the email address? Who is using it? Who is using my IDN? And that's where we need to let them see, I think, and uh, there's a clear benefit, if I can tell in one line, uh, as a technical person and as a commercial person, both 
there is a clear benefit and a future path if you are not you are ready you are going to miss lots of lots of customers help implement your practices in organization so let us say for example nixi just told that they are going to be you are ready if they get stuck it's a technical community role to break their barriers and ensure that the you are readiness happens they should not get stuck while implementing you are readiness and that's where the role and of technical community we are breaking all the barriers which uh, community wants and which uh, organization wants and they are provided those solutions which they need also demonstrate like i just let you experience the email addresses and hosting on idn then they can we need to demonstrate by example microsoft demonstrated by making outlook 16 you uh, are ready our apple demonstrated by ios 14 version uh, supporting you are readiness for uh, phase 1 this is the example we large organizations need to also demonstrate and we all who is listening need to demonstrate in your smaller organizations and your community that you are making you are ready software and this is how it is possible when the large organization lead the path it becomes much more easier from the convincing perspective that this is something which is required for the future and last part which i want to request train the trainers because world is too big 7 billion people we can't reach possibly everywhere so we need to train the trainers and the trainers and the trainers and we need to have a chain of these trainers to talk about your readiness and help organizations to become you are ready thank you maria unmute please maria thank you i <laughs> i'm trying and to control everything but it's it's technically not really easy sometimes okay uh thank you uh, very much aj so for your work and uh, for the possibility for indian users to have and to get the id and email addresses so this is really really great initiative and it's really nice to see that implementers do already do and provide such such services so uh nice to to hear this and uh, our next speaker will be mark swansarik from microsoft uh, from the global technology company so we want to hear what the global companies do for the global market as well so mark please i will share <laughs> your slides okay um so hi everyone i'm mark swansarik <laughs> Microsoft uh, calling you here to from uh, Redmond, Washington, United States. And my little talk is about email address internationalization, which I call a uh, universal acceptance is a team sport. When when you think of all the different things that Dr. Dada's company do for universal acceptance, it's pretty amazing how much he gets done. Um but for the rest of us there's a lot of um teamwork and uh persuading people that they should um work with us and i was just going to tell you a little bit about how this went for email and how it's going on right now so next slide so email related universal acceptance is one of the um uh one of the harder topics because there are a lot of uh, moving parts even more complicated than uh, than IDNs. And so this has been a multi-year proce process and there's lots of people who are involved. There's ICANN, there's the cloud service corporations like uh, like Microsoft, there's standards experts and there's a community of passionate volunteers. But we started by trying to convince some engineers and some managers that they should support these features. You know, every product company has lots of things that they could do. they have many opportunities and so you have to convince them that this is a good opportunity and that it's worth the effort. Uh next slide. So first I'm going to share you some uh some arguments. These are arguments that engineers and managers will give you when you say let's do uh let's become universal uh acceptance compliant and they will say hmm I've never heard of this before it must be very new. I I don't want to do anything new. and of course you tell them no these are stable standards they've been standardized and approved for a long time so don't worry about that uh another thing they might say uh is you know phones and messaging apps they're replacing email communications and there was a time when maybe people thought that but now they realize that all of these things will coexist 
And in fact, email addresses as identities are as common as ever. And so that, that argument is pretty easily refuted. Uh, another one is, again, about phones. Uh, SIM cards will replace email addresses as identities. But not everyone has a phone, and some people share their phones with other people. So using the SIM card as an identity for multiple people, that's easily refuted too. So maybe you think that these are obvious arguments, but people will bring them up and you, you need to know how to answer them. Uh, one of the most annoying ones is people don't really use need this because the existing system works just great. And Anil gave many examples of why in India and elsewhere, um, that's just not true. Uh, I'm putting a, a link in the chat right now. This is a video that was made um, by TH Nick in, in Thailand a few years ago. It's called Kai 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 Kai. Mr. Kai wants to sell chicken eggs. And in the Thai language, Kai, his name, and Kai selling something, and Kai chicken and Kai egg, they're not all Kai, but they all sound like that. And when you transliterate them into the old ASCII character set, it just doesn't make any sense. I think that everyone should watch this video. It's uh, very short and it's very funny. And I've found that this is a, a great way to persuade people who don't understand what the issue is, why universal acceptance is important in real life. Another thing that comes up uh, for email is people say, well, if say a Polish person sends an email to um, a Brazil person, they won't understand each other. How will that work? How will they exchange their, their contact information. And that's because probably that's not the use case. If, if you are a person who speaks many languages and you're very good at English and all the people back in the old country, your old family people, they all understand English too, then this is not a feature that you are depending on. But there are many people, as Anil said, who only use one language or they're only literate in one script. These are the people who are going to benefit from these features. And the, the other people, they should stop worrying about you know, whether it's compatible with them. Uh, a last one is, hmm, we're not seeing a lot of uh, demand for this yet. This is the, what we call the chicken and egg problem. At Microsoft, we are able to just go back to our value statement. Our mission is to empower everyone on the planet. And this is a great way to empower people who aren't using um, English as a first language or the, the Latin character set as their, um, their language of, of reading and writing. And so that was, these arguments uh, were enough to convince Microsoft to support uh, EAI, internationalized email, across all of our email services and applications. But it wasn't enough to do all of the use cases where we use email addresses as identifiers um, for that we still have to deal with the chicken and egg problem. Uh, next slide. You have uh, less than one minute, please. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. I'm sorry that part took too long. Yes. So, so, so here's where the rest of the community comes in. Uh, there is a technical effort. So we have technical standards people who helped us make uh, comprehensive technical documents. Uh, we have several of those in UASG, we have a really good one for EAI now. Uh, then we had other people come in and help us build a test methodology. So using the technical reference document, break out uh, how do you test each of these features. Uh, then we had other community people, volunteers, create the inventory of all the email apps and services and libraries that were we wanted to become UA ready. And then we got other uh, vendors that we, we hired using uh, ICANN resources to actually perform these tests and share the results. And then we could contact back to the technology providers and get them to become um, more UA ready. And then using that inventory from above, we could also outreach to the industry people. That's where those arguments from the previous slide come in. You have to convince them, you have to show them um, that this is valuable and makes sense. 
Um, we're also creating a self-certification process for buyers and suppliers. So Anil was talking about giving people scores. We're trying to create a process where people can rank their rank themselves, give themselves their own score, and uh, um, and then use that in a system like Anil was talking about. And then finally, we have lots of ICANN resources and um, such as messaging and local initiatives. So what Sylvia talked about, those kinds of local initiatives are a big part of this. Uh, we also have uh, academic outreach, academic analysis, like what Cengiz is doing and other training materials. So you can see that even though Microsoft is very interested in this or XGen Plus is very interested in this, uh, really the only way we can do this is by a big collaboration across all of the community from people who are, um, you know, volunteers or experts in one area or experts okay. in another area, everyone working together. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Mark. And I would uh, like to say that uh, Microsoft has already implemented the support for universal acceptance in his products like Microsoft Exchange Server, like Outlook.com and Outlook Mail Client. So this is, you are leading by example. And uh, I think that this also influences all the market, the global market of uh, and email industry. So th this is, this is uh, really nice. And thank you for the support of this initiative. And our uh, last speaker uh, from the technical community and private sector will be Walter Wu from uh, the Chinese IDN registry dot mark uh, TLD registry. So Walter, you have your five minutes. So please, I will share your slides right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maria. Um, uh... I'm very glad to uh, participate this uh, session. Um, personally, I'm from a uh, Chinese IDN registry dot uh, means trademark. Uh, in my understanding, uh, new GTLD registries and the registrars need to play very important role in the UA implementation process. The UA issue needs the support from the software and the internet service vendor, such as the uh, uh, browser, the email provider, the search engine, social media software. But during the process of the communications with those vendors, one of the uh, most frequent questions was asked is, you know, uh, can you tell me how many users is using the IDN right now? Yes, that's the key issue. UA implementation needs the support from the software and other internet service providers, but it really needs the wild uh, wild use of internet users. So as we know, the domain name is a linking and a navigation tool, but the internet user usually don't use the domain names at the search engine. In other words, the internet users don't usually type a domain name in the address bar of browser, uh, especially for both IDN and new GTLDs, unless they are told so. So, um, The domain name registrants of ID and the new, new GTLD needs to tell them, you know, uh, tell the customers or the internet users, this is our name. And it needs the long time process since it needs the time to educate the users, remember it and get used to typing it. Therefore, the registrants actually play one of the key role to improve the UA environment. The registrant promotion from their domain names generates the actual use for internet users. With the actual use, the software and the internet companies have stronger motivation to improve the UA experience. So they apply the UA standard, not only for the ICANN and for the domain name community, but also for fulfilling the demand from the end users. Uh, but there's only one expe exception, if the service provider believe the ID and GTLD will compete with their own service or bring the negative impact, even in the short term, maybe they hesitate to support. But then the provider may postpone the improvement of UA. However, that's a very, uh, however, even in that case, if the internet user has a strong demand, the service provider uh, may eventually compromise. So in the summary, the registries and the registrars need to enlarge the market of IDN and especially educate the registrar to proactively link the domain name to their website, online store, or even the single web page to, to promote in their business implementation. 
for IDN domain names were shown, were recognized and remembered by internet users. And the internet user gradually get used to typing it. Then the UA environment will get better improved. So in this uh, actual slide, I just show uh, provide some showcases that our registry or registrar, you know, is to uh, during the education uh, to the end users, especially those uh, SME customers, they'll proact proactively uh, print their idea on their advertisement, on their package, on their uh, even the, the, the store, the wall of their store. And, and, and by, you know, we follow uh, some of the customers. We, we think during that kind of process, you know, when those domain names were shown, were educated to the uh, uh, end users of the registrar, and actually the registrar got higher traffic from direct type in uh, of those ideas. So that's uh, uh, kind of a showcase I want to show to everyone. And, and you, know, you know, among the uh, initial statement of the other uh, part is what potential collaboration of this role. I think, um, you know, uh, for example, in China, uh, fortunately, we are not work alone. We actually uh, form a, a Chinese domain name initiative under the Internet Society of China we uh, just collaborate with uh, uh, different uh, industry organizations like the China Advertisement uh, Association and the China Trademark Association, uh, you know, to work with those uh, uh, industry organizations. They can understand the value of the idea and what is a key point, what, uh, what is a key benefit uh, to those uh, 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 for for uh, let the users use the idea, and also the government support. Uh, the Walter, government support Walter, is also very important. One minute, so please. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, and um, so uh, or, or uh, the CDNI, the uh, China uh, Domain Initiative, also, uh, you know, um, uh, we we get the support from the community, and eventually there is a. Uh, very important uh, uh, issue in China happened right now because uh, uh, on uh, early November, the MIT, the, the, the related government, published its uh, 15th five year plan for the information communication development and mentioned the ID and the UE issue, particularly to improve the application environment of Chinese IDN. So, uh, you know so as to further promote the uses of Chinese domain names. It definitely will increase the awareness of IDN and the UAE issue in China and increase the software company, input more resources on improving UA environment in China. So it's my personal strong belief that this effort will achieve more progress in China on the UA issue in the next few years. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Walter, very much. So I think that this is a great achievement that you have got uh, the you are supporting the national program. And uh, this is a really nice example of how governments can help to uh, realize universal acceptance achieve, um, support uh, on the national level. So that, that is really, I congratulate you with this achievement actually. So, and hope it really helps. Thank you so much. So, uh, okay, uh, thank you our speakers. So we are going to some discussion with our audience and uh, with our speakers as well. So if uh, you have questions, please post them in the chat. Uh, Dennis? Maria? Yes? Yes, Maria, this is Dennis. There is a question in the chat box. It's uh, okay. actually directed to Mark and it reads, uh, may I ask you to share this Microsoft Lite.com email service going to make support of hosting mailboxes with Unicode in local part of email addresses. If it is so, then when could it happen? If not, then why? Thank you. From Badin. Okay. And Mark just posted his response. There you go. That's- you know, So, so I, I posted the response in the chat. Um, we don't uh, host mailboxes yet. We actually use XGen Plus mailboxes for doing our testing. Thank you. And uh, the reason is that there's some complexity in the way that our identity systems work and we would have to change some things in order to do the hosting because, uh, it, well, there's a complicated interaction between those things. So when I said on my slides that 
there were still some features that were remaining, those are the ones that I'm talking about. Uh, I suspect that Google is in a similar situation. Um, yep. We are just waiting for more, um, more market adoption and that will make those features be a, a higher priority. So for now, you can send, uh, send emails, you can receive them, you can do spam filtering, um, all kinds of email related things. But there are some scenarios like real-time collaboration, which use the email addresses as identifiers, which are not enabled yet. Okay. We're working on it. Great. <laughs> Mark, we wish you luck. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yes, and there are also open source decisions that are available on the market. So where you can use actually the email addresses with the Unicode part, but uh, in most cases, they, they are more like LSS for the um, Latin uh, email addresses, but still it can look like the Unicode on all levels before that and after it. So, and yes, we are waiting for the critical mass of the software that will support universal acceptance and uh, probably it helps to move forward. Okay, great. Uh, I will try to show the results of our pool. Uh, I hope I will be lucky with it. So I think you can see it on the screen, right? Okay, uh, so most of our audience think that the universal acceptance, actually this is, uh, it helps, it really helps to get easier access to the internet and use it um, in a more uh, light way. So, and some of our speak, uh, audience, some participants think that it can improve the interoperability of the internet and of course create new opportunities for uh, the development of new multilingual services online. So this is the results and um, I would say that probably we can consider these results like a result of some universal acceptance promotional activities and the work that's already done so, and uh, we are going to discuss the following question with our um, speakers. Um, Anil, you have raised your hand. You wanted to, to comment? No, I, uh, Maria, I just uh, celebrated uh, the poll results. It was not a hand, thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, so, and uh, we should mention that uh, there are some certain results actually in your implementation that have been achieved uh, the last decade. So, and uh, I would like to, but still, uh, and we, we see that uh, the um, collaboration that's already ongoing and even between implementers. So this is nice. And as we actually have no questions also, I would like to ask the last question to all our speakers. You will have just half of a minute to suggest uh, how do you think, uh, how we can uh, probably improve or probably change the ongoing promotional work and stakeholder engagement processes. So to improve and make really, and, and to really foster the URI implementation. So just uh, suggest one, two concrete uh, takeaways and uh, we will uh, start from implementer side. So AJ, you will be the first. Just one, two concrete suggestions as we have just three minutes left uh, by the end of the I think, day. I think we, we have to just take the steps. I always say taking the first step is an important one. And uh, we have to take the step. It doesn't cost you very much. It, it takes a very little, but you will be you are ready very soon. And uh, Maria, the good part with the poll is that nobody is there who do not see the benefit. So if you see the benefit, then better go for it, right? Why you are pending the benefit not to be accrued there? And that's the theory which I think we all should have and become the part of this success story of the multilingual internet and the UA readiness world. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, AJ, very much. Uh, Mark, you next. Your point. Uh, I, think we, I think we should we should celebrate our successes so far. It's it's very easy to get um, discouraged or frustrated and say, oh, this is so hard and there's so much work left to be done. But if you look back several years, we've made great progress and it's still going on. So just keep remembering your arguments and uh, you know keep up your stamina and stay building your communities, either your technical communities or your local communities 
and keep working together and uh, we will solve it eventually. Okay, thank you, Mark. Thank you, you are very optimistic. <laughs> So that, that, that is right. This is great. Uh, Walter, your suggestions, please. Yes, uh, actually, um, as I suggest just now, um, I think the end user uh, really application of idea is really important, especially, uh, you know, those big, um, you know, companies like, like even Microsoft. I know Microsoft registered a lot of idea, even under our Shang Biao, Microsoft is all client. But you know, that the IDN domain name was only reserved as a kind of domain name protection, not really use that. So my suggestion is the big companies show a uh, link your IDN and show your IDN on your web advertisement and let everyone and uh, let every users in China know Microsoft V run uh, your IDN domain name in China. Uh, not only for Microsoft, but for all every big, uh, you know, uh, 500 companies globally, but for big companies, just show their your ID and names. That's my suggestion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Walter. So the end user side, uh, Sylvia, what you can uh, say to us? What suggestions from your side? Okay. Well, I, I think we should insist and go on in our work to make understand the need of for all domains and emails to be accepted uh, for with in all application and devices to use internet. So capacity building with end user is essential. So they can ask to their internet providers the implementation of the uni universal acceptance. I think for for our side is is that the way. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sylvia. So I agree that users should know they can get such services, right? Yes. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you, Sylvia. Chingis, your suggestions, please. Yeah, we're, we're, okay, thank you, Maria. Uh, very briefly, it takes time to understand why people don't move or when they start moving. For that reason, in practical terms, what we know is that technology is spread through pioneering people. And this is not crowded group of people, but they're really influential. Therefore, I guess uh, we should spot the domains of success and disseminate success stories to improve UA globally. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Chengiz. And uh, Anil, please, suggestions from government side. Uh, thank you, Maria. Uh, the first suggestion is uh, we should start sharing the success stories with each other, you know, so that we understand uh, where it has gone. The second, regarding capacity building, I think uh, we are going ahead and I request all other to appoint a universal acceptance ambassador. They will go to the various community, explain how it has to be done, and final suggestion, start a helpline 24 by 7 so that in case anybody want any problem in universal acceptance implementation, they can reach out to the experts and experts can lend their hand for uh, better implementation so, so that overall uh, success can uh, uh, get in universal acceptance. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Anya, very much. So I would like to, uh, actually, we are at the end of our session and we need to conclude it. I would say that we really, I think we make the really input ourselves by this session to the global cooperation and engagement processes, I believe so. And also uh, we will put all the takeaways and calls for action in the report, of course. And, but of course we see that there are all, some problems in place and we need to continue this work. We probably need to uh, educate uh, our um, end users more because we see that okay, actually not so many questions. So not so many discussions from the end user side. So our work also is to spread the UI awareness further and to take, um, and to make end users to pay attention to such new opportunities on the internet they can really get and by using their local languages. So uh, thank you once again for all who has joined us today, for all the speakers, all the participants in the audience in Poland. So have a lucky end of the IGF. And I think this is really important that we are discussing these topics on such a global platforms. Thank you all. And we can close the session right now.